Hey guys, how's it going? This is Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So I'm pretty excited about the topic for today because I think it's one of those things that I, if I look at what I've done really well, is that I keep things that are very simple. I try to, you know, to make games that are not too complicated, that I can actually finish as a solo game developer. If you have seen some of the things that I've done, I, I try to make not, not only minimalistic games just because I like the look and feel, I actually make him very simple because that's that's what I, I am realistic to my with myself. I I try to make games that you know that I that I'm realistic about finishing. I try not to make something that you know looks really amazing but then I can't really finish. Because you know at the end of the day I think I, I get driven by how much I complete. I get driven by you know by getting something released. Regardless if it does well or not. I think we we always I want to think we always think about you know we want to be super successful we want to make these these amazing game that is gonna be it's gonna go viral but we don't we we need to focus on on the fundamentals I mean focus on 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 the core like why is it that you're making a game why why is it that we want to keep things simple from the get go and, and the the main reason for that is for me is because I want to be able to finish what I create I want to also create something that people are gonna like. So if we if I think about you know finishing finishing a game and releasing it to the market, I'm also thinking about you know how can I make it so simple that I can get critical feedback from from a user before I actually get a release. So one one of the recommendations that I always tell people of what, what they need to do when they're starting a game or they're starting an app is that you know get a group of people to test it don't spend don't spend months working on a game don't spend years working on a game and then release it and then get that feedback to work on your next game what i what i've done recently and i and i do it on every other game after my first one is that i actually you know i get five to ten people that are in my niche that might not know me really well and i say okay could you test the game and and, and tell me what you think, tell me what your experience was. Do you like the controls? Do you like the, the environment? Do you like the atmosphere? Do you like the colors? Do you like, you know, give me your honest opinion about, about the game. I, wa I want them to be as honest as they can because, and the reason why I say that they don't know you really well because we don't want to get feedback from family members. They might, you know, they love you. They might not give, they don't want to give you, you know, criticism. But the people that, that we want to find are people that, you know, you might not know really well. They might have heard of you, but they don't know you directly. So they, they won't be afraid of telling you the truth. So, so that's why it's so important to, you know, to, to get information like that from people that you don't know. Because you can quickly say, you know, I'm creating a prototype. I'm creating a simple prototype. I had, you know, this group of people test my game and they say X, they say Y, they say Z. I'm getting a lot of excess and, and you know, there's a pattern in here and it might mean that, you know, the controller that you created for your game is not, it, it's not intuitive, they don't really like it, so that might mean that you need to improve it. So I had an experience like that and in one of the games that I previously created is that, you know, I thought that the control was very intuitive, but I've been looking at that game every single day, I've been, I've been dreaming about it and so my perception about the controller was completely different to the perception of the controller from a, from a completely different person. So, so make sure that you do that, make sure that you're prototyping, you know, and you're keeping things as simple as you can. The, the other thing about simplicity is that it, it will allow you to, to finish your game. So it doesn't, your game doesn't need to be complex in order to be good. That's a misconception that, that I hear a lot and, and that I had personally. You, you, can, you can make a really amazing game by having one to two mechanics. And, and if those mechanics are really polished and, and the game is really fun, that's gonna make a better, you know, a better result than having 100 mechanics that really don't make sense in the game. So keeping your game simple and, and doesn't mean that it's not, gonna be, it's not gonna be fun. It's actually gonna allow you to test very quickly how people are gonna like it. And the other thing about, about simplicity for me that talks a lot is I, I really like simplicity as a aesthetic. Like I really like to, to go into a game where I don't have too much going on. And, and that's what I love about minimalistic design and, and that's my niche. That might not mean that is that is your niche, 
but it doesn't you don't need to love minimalistic games in order to have to make simple things you can make something very very big and have a lot of colors and a lot of different things and at the same time keep some of the things very simple it doesn't mean that they're going to be complex just because you have way too many items on the screen when i say simple make the experience simple for the user so that they understand what they're doing the the ux is is very critical so if you if you ever have an opportunity to watch somebody play your game before you actually release it i really recommend you do that because you'll see things that are that are amazing like you would never think to have done something until you watch somebody else play your game so so yeah you do that you know test a uh, prototype uh, iterate through that process and when i say iterate make sure that you're grabbing you know that knowledge from from users early on and applying it to, to future releases if you can apply you know something that it's it's very obvious that is not working in your game if you do iterations let's say that you go in every every two weeks and, and applying updates to your to your game pre-release or post release make sure that you do that and and you always improve in your games you're always improving what, whatever that it is that you're doing in your you know in your project so thank you again guys i i really appreciate it i hope this basically answers some of your questions about about simplicity you don't need to make complex games in order to make good games games can be simple applications can be simple and and just just go through the process try that multiple times and see how it goes thank you guys and don't forget to share don't forget to subscribe thank you again